So I will uh, uh, go on to uh, show you a VNC uh, window. Uh, Okay, I hope uh, you can see this. So this is, uh, so I am right now uh, in, uh, uh, again uh, inside the toolkit by uh, 6 pub. So these are the various classes that I described uh, which are here. So th there are separate folders. So there is also a folder called as a 6 pub template list. So you can, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can use this as a template for starting your own development. So, uh, so what I am going to do is, uh, uh, so I am going to copy this to a new folder right now and uh, uh, you know, assuming that I am starting from scratch. So uh, I am creating a new folder. So I did that. So I am going to uh, uh, show you how I can uh, uh, show this new development. So there are uh, uh, various uh, uh, components which are available, so let me uh, so how we can stop. So this is a template for the C++ class itself. Uh, in the C++ of the various uh, uh, standard parameters which are needed. So these are already provided for you. So the, if the most important things are two things. So one is the init uh, API and the other one is uh, the process API. So uh, the init API is called the access framework uh, for, uh, for uh, initializing whatever uh, uh, operations or whatever components that you want to uh, invoke uh, whatever components or widgets that you want to create uh, that you want to show on the screen. So right now the template you can see that it's empty. So you can add your own uh, uh, you can add your own uh, 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 code. To make it simpler, I'm going to copy uh, some standard uh, components uh, to show just the hello world example. So uh, so what are we doing here? So uh, so you can see uh, several things. One is that I'm creating, uh, since the XSP operates on a few graphics view framework, so uh, all the items which are added there are considered to be few graphics items. And uh, in, the, in this special case, we are adding text, uh, hello world text. So this will become a few graphics text item. So uh, we created a, 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 a pointer and we are, uh, we are creating a new instance of it by doing this add text. So, uh, and we want to display hello world on the screen. So this is how you do it. So we can uh, directly use uh, API called Attex. So by doing this, we will make hello world appear on the screen. And uh, once you create this uh, uh, cube graphics text item, you can position it anywhere on the canvas by doing the API called move by. So uh, these are the X and Y coordinates. So by 200 by 200, uh, we are making it uh, visible almost in the center of the screen. So uh, as we discussed in the earlier uh, uh, position, uh, earlier uh, slide, so this is uh, uh, so this is a mechanism by which we allow the framework to handle all the uh, bookkeeping steps. So we are just adding the uh, you know, created widget into the work, uh, work item list so that we don't have to bother about deleting and maintaining the newly created classes. The framework takes care of deleting all the things that we want uh, that are needed. Now, in the, uh, so the init is a one-time call, so once, it's, uh, once uh, this has been done, so you can see the widget on the screen. Now, the process API is used for animation. So, for example, if you want to run this, uh, uh, run this particular uh, uh, framework or this particular application uh, every one second, so this process API will be called every one second, and uh, you can add all your animation operations. For example, if you want to move this particular piece of text, uh, every now and then uh, to a different location. You can do the same set over here so that every one second it will keep moving uh, to a different place. And after you do your operations, you have to mark, that, uh, mark the widget as uh, that the same of most that your process call is ended. Uh, so if you don't do this, you will have to uh, define your own event handler and uh, call this from uh, somewhere else so that uh, the frame of most that, uh, uh, you know, the asynchronous processing is complete. So right now in this uh, simple example, we are not doing anything in the process, so we just create one simple uh, hello world. So I'll, uh, uh, I'll exit uh, the uh, implementation class. So uh, the next I'm going to go to the header file, and uh, I'll show you uh, what are the steps here. 
So right now in the template, so you can see the definition of the class. I am generating the application base class which configures and which is the base class for the framework. And you can see that I am uh, uh, I am defining this uh, template name as uh, you know my app. You can change it to any other name that uh, that you would need. So uh, so uh, so then automatically the name of the class and your application becomes uh, the new application name. The third thing that I wanted to show you is uh, the CRO file. So you can see that uh, there is a, a CRO file. So this CRO file is the actual project file which by which Qt knows what files to include and what files it needs to generate. So the template equal to lib shows that it needs to generate a library. The target equal to uh, shows that it has to generate a library by this name. And these are the sources that need to be included for building this library. And these are the headers that it needs to include. So, uh, so this is how uh, you create a, a, a new application library in six Pro. So uh, once you do that, you can uh, uh, you know go to the top level at this book and uh, do a make and make install. And you can, uh, uh, for example, I have done this step uh, uh, to build somebody. So uh, when you do a make and make install. So, uh, so these are the steps that happen. So, uh, so, uh, so typically from the top level uh, install folder, you do a make and make install. And at the end of the, uh, the build process, you will find the corresponding application library which is generated. For example, in this case, the libx Express template, this is the library that we have generated as part of the build process. So this can be directly loaded by the XX Express framework and used in your application. Uh, in the application to generate uh, whatever we wanted to see. So in in this particular case, we generated a Hello World application, and when you run the uh, X6 Plus application, so you can see that the Hello World is shown on the screen. So uh, you can run this directly uh, like this. So for example, this is how we would invoke. So X6 Plus app minus QWS for QT embedder, and there are various arguments that you can uh, that you can use for uh, providing to the X6 Plus application. So once you do this, so you can see the output on the screen, uh, in this case, the Hello World application. So uh, this is a fairly simple mechanism by which you can create, uh, you know, uh, various complex examples of this, uh, the, using this simple Hello World example. Uh, uh, so the init and process APIs allow you to create uh, one-time static images or dynamic animating images using various beauty classes. So uh, I just uh, walk you through some of the steps. So, uh, uh, in a more complicated steps, you can take a look at the other X6 plus classes. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we'll have to, uh, you know, run through this. But these are very important tips that I wanted to share. So, do's and don'ts. So, on the do side, so uh, always use the queue static text uh, API for uh, uh, for using uh, static text which uh, you know which do not update to open. So, uh, uh, typically using this class, uh, you know. Uh, Compare it with the regular QTEX or existing implementation. This has been added on QT 4.7. So uh, there are two uh, major rendering components. One is the screen quality performance and uh, uh, and the widget rendering performance. So by screen quality, what we mean is the widget itself is created in an off-screen surface and then it is later shown on the screen from the background to the foreground. Now, uh, so the screen quality performance can be segregated by uh, by using the Lightman plugin uh, or uh, or you can use other methods also. But by using a Lightman plugin, you are uh, you are separating the output from uh, the display component, so you can measure only the uh, the non-screen performance, that is the uh, widget rendering performance. You can see how long it took to which, uh, render one widget without showing on the screen. So you can very clearly notice that uh, you know which widgets are taking time uh, separately from the screen display. You can, uh, the other uh, key thing to note is uh, all animating things in when using the XQ graphics view framework, uh, there are uh, large overheads uh, when you use the animation framework specifically on the vector graphics Python. So, uh, so as part of the uh, XQ uh, we are also providing a, a, a fixed item for the XPG, which is a pre-rendered optimist class uh, as part of the toolkit. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so still we have a regular. Uh, uh, drop from Qt with all this, so uh, you, you can use this for animation uh, using the QGraphics view framework uh, using this particular class. This is a header file that is provided. You can use this in your application. 
So this reduces CP load by close to 30 to 40 percent depending upon how fast you are animating and the number of animating items. The other key component that you need to notice, uh, uh, you need to ensure that typical UAE operations never exceed, uh, you know, 20 to 25 percent and the worst case, uh, you know, peak load should not exceed uh, more than 40 percent. So if it exceeds beyond that, uh, you will see an impact on, uh, you know, either on the rendering performance or it will begin to affect other applications. So typically this is a standard benchmark that you should look at for measuring your UI uh, loads. So uh, some of the don'ts, so uh, uh, it's uh, not advisable to keep changing the large background images. For example, if you have a desktop kind of uh, implementation and if you keep changing a live wallpaper in the background every, uh, every you know, half, uh, you know, every only second or so, that will soak up the CPU, uh, uh, you know, close to 100 percent. So uh, it's advisable not to keep changing the large background images, but uh, you know make it cached and uh, you know have it static and update only the portions that uh, that need to update that need to be updated. Uh, animation is uh, uh, avoided especially for large and uh, vector graphics images. So there are other alternative classes that uh, we are providing to so use them, or uh, if animation you know it's advisable to use it in a smaller uh, resolution or. Uh, uh, you know, use other methods of pre rendered uh, animation classes. So, uh, I think uh, we are reaching the towards end of the presentation. So, I wanted to leave uh, with a quick comparison of how Qt compares with, uh, you know, Flash and, uh, you know, other frameworks. So, uh, uh, so typically Qt embedded, uh, uh, is Qt embedded as we saw, it's a, uh, you know, very simple framework. So, uh, but it has a lot of powerful classes. Uh, and Qt with extract and, you know, ramp up to other more advanced uh, uh, implementations uh, like, you know, compositing and other uh, implementations. Uh, but uh, Qt, if you really look at it, it, it scales from ultra low, uh, low memory implement, low memory footprints. Uh, you know, we can, uh, for example, implement a very simple thing within, you know, under uh, a very optimized implementation under 0.5 MB. Uh, with, uh, you know, with a very special, uh, uh, you know, optimization and uh, even specific classes, uh, which is not probably possible in other implementations, uh, you know, for, uh, which offer so much of functionality. Uh, there are uh, good tools available uh, which are still evolving. Uh, today, if you look at it, the programming tools still do not match, for example, with what Microsoft offers or with what Flash offers, but, uh, you know, with the launch of the new IDE from Qt, uh, we are getting there, so uh, you know you can, you can uh, use the latest uh, uh, designer and creator offerings from uh, from uh, Nokia and uh, check it out. Uh, and uh, definitely, memory consumption is one of the key strong points of uh, Qt uh, compared to the others. So, uh, so this uh, uh, this is a quick comparison, so uh, you know, uh, so that we know where uh, Qt stands. Uh, just wanted to leave uh, with the set of next steps. So. You can download Qt with the links and the uh, information that was provided in this presentation and which is there in the uh, links. And you can download the toolkit. So you can configure, build and extend applications using the toolkit or uh, use Qt provided examples on Housebook. You can integrate drivers and real-time maps on Qt and check out using the various uh, frameworks and debug methods that we talked about. So uh, I think that's... Uh, Pretty much uh, what I had, and uh, I would uh, probably stop here with uh, uh, a set of links that I have here. So we have the QT download, uh, configuration sets, uh, the excuse for animation, uh, this is a presentation from Nokia on how we can do special effects and animations on graphics view. Uh, we have the system blog for the TA graphics update, uh, and uh, uh, there are advanced uh, 3D engines available on the Puma 3. So uh, this uh, graphics uh, SDK for that. Uh, these are the half board specific pages. Uh, there are much more information available here. Uh, and along with more open source projects uh, continuing from half board to uh, many more open source project legal board projects. 